Okay, so still going with limits, but we're going to talk about a concept called one-sided limits. I've kind of already been using this phrasing a little bit, uh, but we're going to look at the notation and, and everything. So there are several situations where a limit at a point does not exist. Now, you won't have functions as a whole that, you know, the limit of sine of x doesn't exist. No, there are certain places where it may not exist. But let's look at some more notation. Uh, so we've got the notation here for a left-handed limit. Okay, notice it looks the same. Still limit x with the arrow. But notice after the c, it has a little minus sign. Now, it should be a little superscript. I couldn't fix it like that uh, typing. So you'll see I have a, an example there. The limit as x approaches 2 has a little minus sign as a subscript after it. Okay, that is the limit as you approach positive 2 from the left. Same thing with the right-handed limit. Uh, there's a plus that follows it. It's not re-identifying that as positive 2. It's saying that's the limit as we approach 2 from the right. So let's look at a situation. They like this function too. The limit as x approaches 0 of x over the absolute value of x. Now here's the graph of it. Let's talk about for a second why the graph looks this way. Let's just talk about a few, let's just evaluate this for a few points. f of negative 3. If we plug in negative 3 in for x, we get negative 3 over the absolute value of negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3, so the answer is negative 1. Let's do negative 2. Plug in negative 2. We got negative 2 over the absolute value of negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, so negative 2 divided by positive 2 is negative 1. So any time here that your x value is negative, this function, x over the absolute value of x, is always going to be negative 1. Okay? Uh, let's just do this. f of, let's not use a whole number, let's do f of negative 0.1. The same thing's going to happen. Negative 0.1 over the absolute value of negative 0.1 is negative 0.1 over positive 0.1, which is negative 1. So right here at negative 0.1, here is our y value. Okay, I wanted to point that out so you can see why that continues to get closer and closer to the y-axis at negative 1. Positive value, I'm just going to plug in 1 because I think you're getting the hang of this here. 2 over the absolute value of 2, well, that's 2 over 2, which is positive 1. So whenever your x values are positive, your y values are always going to be positive 1. So that's why the graph of this function looks the way that it does. Now, here's the problem. If we're asked about the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side, we're approaching negative 1. From the right side, we're approaching positive 1. So this limit does not exist because f of x, the function, approaches a different number from the right side of c. Remember, c is our x value. Then it does from the left side. So in this case, we had negative 1 and positive 1. Those don't agree. So that limit, that two-sided limit, just as x approaches 0, does not exist. Now, we could talk about the left-handed limit. That exists. The limit as x approaches 0 from the left of this function is negative 1. And the limit as we approach 0 from the right of this function is positive 1. Okay, The left-handed limit and the right-handed limits exist. The two-sided limit does not exist because those two values here do not agree. They do not agree. All right, here's another situation. We already looked at this function. The limit as x approaches 2 of 1 over x minus 2. Okay, let's look at the left-handed limit. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left of this function. Let's see what our y values are doing. They've got the arrow there. I'm going to add a few more arrows. It's headed towards negative infinity. The limit as we approach 2 from the right of this function, following the arrow going up, 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 it's going to positive infinity. 
So those two numbers, again, do not agree. We've got a negative infinity and we've got a positive infinity. So this limit, DNE, does not exist. Does not exist. Now, it's not undefined. It does not exist. Well, I think I said it was undefined earlier. Either one. You'll see it phrased both ways. Either undefined or does not exist. They mean the same thing. Okay? Let's look at this one. The limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared. The limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared. So, let's look at it from the left. From the left, our y values are going up and up and up. They're going to positive infinity. From the right, they're doing the same thing. Now, you may say, well, those agree. Yes, they do agree. But the limit is talking about what specific y value are we headed towards. We're not headed towards one specific y value here. Infinity is not a specific number. Infinity is the biggest number you can possibly imagine. Well, once you get that number, add one to it and you got a bigger number. So infinity can't be one specific number. So I've seen this phrase both ways. I've seen them say that this limit does not exist. I've also seen it where does not exist was not an answer choice. Positive infinity was actually an answer choice. So I know that's kind of confusing. I'm not trying to confuse you here. But one school of thought says that this does not exist because of what is phrased below here. It does not exist because the function increases or decreases without bound. Without bound means it never ends. It's going to infinity. So some people say that it doesn't exist. But then some people say this one does exist because both sides are headed to the same infinity. Both sides are headed towards positive infinity. As opposed to the previous example, at the asymptote of 2, these were headed in opposite directions. That one definitely does not exist. Limit to part A definitely does not exist. B, you will see either answer choice. I promise you they will not put both D and E and positive infinity as an answer choice. It will be either or, but i got to explain it to you both ways because I've seen it go both ways. Okay, so if I need to explain that a little bit more, just let me know. All right? Let's look at another scenario. This is a really weird looking function. Uh, and if you graph it and you don't adjust your window, it'll look like you're headed towards zero. At zero, it will look like your graph is headed towards zero if you don't adjust the window. But if you do adjust the window, if you do zoom in like they have on this graph, you will see this really weird, see this kind of blob in the middle there? This is called oscillating behavior. Okay, this is oscillating. This function is bouncing so quickly between negative 1 and positive 1, um, when, when the x value changes by just a little bit, it automatically shoots it to the other side. So it's, it's just going crazy right there around 0. So you can't pin it down. You can't pin it down. If you plug 0 into the function here, you've got the sign of pi over 0. Now that's not an indeterminate form. That is an undefined number because you're, you're dividing by 0. Um, so that, that's just a big no-no. Uh, dividing by zero is not a good thing. You can't fix that problem you, normally, okay? Normally you can't fix that problem. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you can, but most of the time you can't fix dividing by zero. Um, so this is oscillating behavior. So this function does not have a limit as x approaches zero. Now over here at, let's say, negative one, you're good. You have a limit that equals zero. Um, at negative two, you got a limit. It's negative one. Okay, so it has limits at certain places, but at zero, this function is oscillating. It's bouncing between negative one and positive one, uh, which they're trying to show you down here in this table um, how the y values are bouncing back and forth. See how they're just changing the x value by a little bit, but these y values are bouncing between positive and negative. Um, that's that oscillating behavior. This limit at zero doesn't exist. 
It exists other places, just not at zero where that oscillating behavior is occurring. Okay, so there it is in words. You can copy that down if you need to. All right, let's talk about, they love these piecewise functions that, that they don't give you the equations for. They just give you a graph. So let's, let's look at the one-sided and two-sided limits at zero, two, and at four. So the limit as we approach zero, I'm going to start with zero from the left of, I'm just going to name this f of x because I don't have a name for it. I'm just going to name it f of x. From the left over here, on the left side of zero, we've got that oscillating behavior. So the left side of limit does not exist. The right side of limit, however, okay, as we're approaching zero from the right side, we're headed towards a y value of two. So that limit does exist. But then the two-sided limit, does not exist because the one-sided limits do not agree. Okay. Let's look as we're approaching two. Now I'm just zoning in on this part of the graph now, right here around x equals two. So left-handed limit at two, where are our y values headed? Our y values are headed to three. Right-handed limit, go into two. From the right side, our y values are headed to one. So here's another example. Our two-sided limit does not exist because we are not headed to the same value from the left side and from the right side. Finally, let's zone in at x equals four over here. So the left-handed limit at four of our function. From the left side, we're approaching two. Hopefully you can see we don't have an issue here. From the right side, we are approaching two. So that means that our two-sided limit is two. Because from the left side and from the right side, we're headed to the same value. Now, at 4, f of 4 does not exist. There is a hole at f of 4, but we still have a limit. You can still have a limit even if the function does not exist at a point. Okay? All right. So, here we looked at the piecewise functions with the equal to and the not equal to. Let's look at them here with the less than and greater than. So the instructions are to evaluate the one-sided limits and determine if the two-sided limit exists. Here's how I'm going to, well, let's, let's look at the graph. Okay, let's look at the graph, just so that you continue to get that picture. At negative one is where we are changing. Okay, we are changing at x equals negative one. So I always start with the left side. The left side is the second one this time. So negative 2x minus 3, I'm just going to try and do my best here. Um, this is sort of, it's a general idea of what that should look like on the left side. The right side, 4x minus 1, let's see here, y-intercept of negative 1, slope of 4, it's not equal to at negative 1. So this is what our piecewise function looks like. So you can see it's discontinuous at negative one. It is not continuous at negative one because those two pieces don't meet up at negative one. So I can go ahead and say that my two-sided limit does not exist, but let's go ahead and, and evaluate the uh, one-sided limits as we approach negative one from the left of f of x. That means I plug it into the piece where x is less than or equal to negative 1. So negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Positive 2 minus 3 is negative 1. That's my left-sided limit. Let's do the right-sided limit. Plug it into the 4x minus 1. So that's negative 4 minus 1. That's negative 5. 
So there's the algebraic justification for why this two-sided limit does not exist because the one-sided limits don't exist, but we also have the graph to back us up. Let's look at one more example here. f of x equals 2x when x is greater than or equal to 2 and x squared when it's less than 2. So, whoops. Um, Left-handed limit. Limit as x approaches 2 from the left. The left is this piece. x is less than 2. Forgot my f of x there. Okay, so 2 squared is 4. From the right, that's when x is greater than 2. So we get 2 times 2, which is 4. So here's a piecewise function where at that changing point, the limit does exist because this one would be continuous. They meet up at 2 where the function changes. They did not meet in the previous example. So you got to evaluate both pieces and see if they match. All right, so this isn't really a ticket out of the door. This is kind of a, a checkup for you. Uh, I would like, uh, I'm going to read it out, and then you need to pause it. You need to think about it, and then I will explain it uh, when you resume the video. So consider the function. It's a piecewise function. Square root of x minus 2 when x is greater than 3. 6 minus 2x when x is less than or equal to 3. And they ask you this. Which of the following statements is true? The limit as x approaches 3 of x minus, the square root of x minus 2 is 1. The limit as x approaches 3 of 6 minus 2x is 0. And then the limit, statement 3, the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x does not exist. They love these questions. They love, love, love them. you got to get used to them. you got to be careful with them because they like to slip in little exceptions. So pause the video. Think about it. When you resume the video, then I will explain the correct answer. So let's look at statement number one. Statement number one just says the limit as x approaches 3 of the square root of x minus 2 equals 1. All we've got to do is plug 3 into this function. So the square root of 3 minus 2, 3 minus 2 is 1, square root of 1 is 1. Statement number one is good. Okay. Statement number two, the limit as x approaches 3 of 6 minus 2x. 6 minus 2x is continuous. Just plug it in. 6 minus 2 times 3, 6 minus 6, it's 0. Statement number 2 is true. Let's look at statement number 3. The limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. Well, what was f of x? f of x was that piecewise function that puts together these two functions that we just evaluated in 1 and 2. So did they have the same value? They didn't have the same value. So that limit at 3 does not exist. So statement three is true as well. So all three of these statements, D, one, two, and three, are true. Now they like to throw in the word not true um, and things like that. So you really, you gotta take a little bit of time on these questions when you run into them on the AP exam. All right, so hopefully you have got the gist of what's going on with Limits, limits with problems, one-sided limits, and whatnot. Um, I will have an assignment for you to practice with the one-sided limits on the haiku page.